one of our major jobs was to handle pods and pod stands for point of distribution. And at each pod, there was a variety of different supplies that survivors might need, such as food, water, ice, baby supplies, hygiene care, cleaning supplies. And our job was basically to man these pods and give people what they needed. guys put more work in two days than your average person sitting back at home. So you think about that. Think about the lives that you've helped out today. Some of these people got it really, really, really hard. All right. They leave here. They see young, smiling faces, handing out food, helping them out. It makes them feel better for when they go back home and have to continue to deal with the situation that they're in. So for me, in the bottom of my heart, the medical section that was here today, I want to say thank you guys. After the she started crying, and I gave her a hug, and she's like, you know, I'm a Christian, you know, and it's hard, like, for me to like, understand why God would let this happen to me. Like, I've lost my house and my business, and right now I don't have anywhere to go, and all I have is my car. And I just was like, you know, it's awesome seeing someone practicing their faith, you know, after uh, this disaster, and that blessed me. So one day I was working with the wood crew, and we went to a house, but the owner wasn't home. We worked on tree removal in her yard. We were picking up sticks, we were raking leaves. It was really cool, but still, there was no one to reach out to. Then I looked over across the street and I saw a lady. She had a piece of fencing in her arms and I saw one fall out. And so I rushed across the street and I'm like, ma'am, do you need help? And she said, well, yes, I would like some help. So I helped her and we worked until everything needed was done. After I prayed with her and she cried and thanked me for my help. I'm crying because you guys are here. I'm not crying because of the house. Uh, all that will, insurance will cover all of it. My wife will get a newly remodeled house. Which is what she wanted. <laughs> uh, money will take care of that, but money can replace this. So we've been working here with the Mercy Chefs, and what we do is we serve hot meals to about 4,000 people per day, and it's been really fun. The people that we work with have been super nice, and they've come from all over the country, and the people we serve have been super appreciative. You know, when you lose everything, a lot of times you don't have food to eat and a good hot meal is even harder to get. So going out here and serving the people has been a great service to me and I know that I'm able to help lots of you. I prayed for this lady and her three girls one day. They were looking through clothes because they lost all of their clothes in the storm. A tree fell on the bedrooms where all their clothes were, and all of their clothes were destroyed. We had shopping carts full of clothes and I was helping them sort through them. And at the end I asked to pray for them. Well the next day she came back again and she said, hey, can you please pray for my neighbor? I really want you to pray for my neighbor. The prayers you prayed for me, they helped me and comforted me a lot, so would you please pray for my neighbor? Well, the next day she comes back and she says, I want you to pray for my other neighbor. So I said, okay, sure, and I prayed for her other neighbor. It was cool to see that she was just really happy about the prayers and that she was wanting me to pray not only for her, but for her other neighbors and friends. I was responsible with Angela Boothby for setting up a pod from scratch. And that was an interesting experience. Um, we went to a school that had been lightly damaged um, we decided where the flow of traffic would be and where to set up all the supplies. And 
While we were there, we noticed there was another company that was um, cleaning out the school. When we got to be friends uh, with this guy in charge, his name was Drew, I noticed that over time, um, I was able to pray with him and I was really excited about that. Um, after being there a couple days, he came back to me and said, I need prayer again because I'm behind schedule and I'm not used to managing 30 people underneath me. I was able to pray with him again and I realized that with this whole disaster response trip, there is so much power in prayer. So many people were blessed, not just with the food and the water that we could give them, but being able to pray with them and point them to a higher power, to remind them that this problem was not bigger than God, but that God was bigger than this problem. I'm trying to pray with people. So I remember this car pulled up and there were three sketchy guys in it. And I remember I just wanted to get them out of there and get them what they needed. So I was trying to rush my partner. And I remember um, God's voice was like, give them a glow track. And I was like, no God, I'm not giving them a glow track. That's a waste of literature. They're not gonna read it. And God's voice came again. He was like, Gabby, give them a glow track. And I was like, okay, God, fine. I'll give them a glow track. If you blow this certain glow track in front of me with a gust of wind, I'll give them a glow track. And immediately a gust of wind came and that certain glow track fell right in front of me. And I remember chills went up my spine. So I picked it up and handed it to the driver. He was like, thank you, sweetheart. So then God's voice came again. He was like, Gabby, pray with them. And I was like, no God, this is not happening. I'm not praying with them. And God was like, are you really gonna test me again, Gabby? So I was like, fine, I'll pray with them. So I prayed the shortest and sweetest prayer I could. And when I opened my eyes, all of them were in tears and crying. And I remember being shocked because I didn't think it was that good of a prayer. And it just reminded me that when God tells you to do something, you should do it. And the guy was like, you don't understand. When people see us, they don't see good, they see bad. And the fact that you're a young lady and you saw good in us, we will never forget. So when God tells you to do something, it's really important that you do what he tells you to do.